Hey guys, Simon here again. Continuation, Solomon's Tales. We left it. Solomon and Ning was just about to sort some bikes out. They were talking to Jeff, the bar manager. Jeff was advising that they took small Hondas, the Honda Wave. This is like a Honda C90. Semi-automatic, three or four gear, step-through motorbike, as you see all over Asia. Um, they're everywhere. The road system was really bad in Cambodia. A lot of one minute you'd have tarmac, the next minute would be just mud roads, potholes. And as he said, if you get the bigger bikes, you're gonna fall off and you're gonna damage and it's gonna cost you a fortune. Ning was really into the big bikes. So was Solomon, but she really she didn't. You know, she understood that it was gonna be small bikes. But hey, it was an adventure. Plus the cost as well, these little small bikes. Jeff was saying if he took Solomon around to this woman, he could get one of these, or a couple of these bikes, 150 bars a day each as a deal. Now, time-wise, um, it was going to be a few days probably to get down to Shulukville or whatever it's called. Shuluk in the, now when I say south, it's actually from Phnom Penh, it's actually southwest or even west. And then there's a bit down and then the Vietnamese border sort of down in the southeast there. So it's sort of going across country, or you're looking at it that way down. <laughs> um, and Jeff mentioned that if he just did the first day, not so, but not so, didn't hit it so hard, there was a place um, called Krong, I think it was, which wasn't that far from um, Pompen. I think it was, I'm just checking my Krong Chabamon. Or whatever it's called wasn't that far it was to break it up then possibly you could make the journey on the bikes down to Schluckville in a long day thereafter it's only great so Jeff got his cashier to look after the bar and he was brilliant literally 100 meters around the corner walked around with Ning and Solomon and there was this lady again grumpy old lady I keep finding these grumpy old ladies in Asia Jeff spoke to her, he spoke quite good, do you call it Cambonese? <laughs> Cambodianese? Anyway, a former Kimmer, I don't know, but chatted to this woman and she pointed out some bikes and she had some Hondas there. She had some 125 Hondas with electric start. Um, and then she had some 110 Hondas with no electric start, which were much cheaper looking bike. But she offered, if Solomon took two bikes, the 125s with the electric starts for uh, 150 a day. Absolutely brilliant. Now, Solomon didn't know how long this trip was going to be. So he told the lady, don't know how long it's going to be. At least a week, maybe more. She was happy that a photocopy of their passports, not a problem, and any damage or breakdowns that, or any damage that he'd Solomon have to pay for breakdown she would cover if he got them repaired and bring a bill back that was good if he paid a week money for both bikes up in advance he was fine absolutely perfect so that's what he did he gave her in dollars enough money for both bikes for a week passports and she, she squirreled off into the back of her little shop and photocopied them and came back with the passports, so that was good. And there's the bikes, helmets. But it was real plasticky, nasty helmets. So Solomon asked, is there any possibility of a better helmet? And she had a few, so they tried some different ones on. Yep, yeah, sorted, open face helmets, but they were proper polycarbonate and decent helmets. And she was, there you go, helmets, bikes. So they left the shop, they got the bikes, said thank you so much to Jeff, um, and headed back to their hotel. Rode the bikes back, parked my hotel, went in, and it was better if they waited till the next morning before heading off. Jeff had said it was probably a, a three four hour ride to this area 
might be worth going online and trying to find a guest house there and booking online. Um, and they could have a look around Pompen. Now they've got the bikes. So they'd have to come back to Pompen to bring the bikes. So Solomon said to Ning, when we come back on the circuit, we'll spend a couple of days here and have a good look around. So, yeah, that's what they did. So they dumped the bikes hotel back in, paid the hotel for another night. In the corner is a little bit of an email, a couple of machines they can use, um, internet. And they jumped on there. Ning went on email, started emailing someone, probably the boyfriend. And Solomon uh, found a guest house. There was two or three, but not many in this crong but couldn't figure out a way of booking them they were there listed but just didn't so what he did he wrote the addresses down and he's going to take a gamble and he had finished and he said we'll just ride there tomorrow there's three there I'm sure one of them will have a room we should be okay let me just whatever yeah so they spent the rest of the day um, just local to the hotel, bit of a market across the road and there's restaurants and cafes around. So they had a mooch around on foot, food, a couple more drinks later, but didn't go off on, on the bar area, just stayed local to the hotel. And normal day really, nothing exciting, another nice night for Solomon. Next morning, he gets up, they both get up, go out, cafe next door, breakfast, check out the hotel, rucksacks on the back, onto the motorbikes. Now all Solomon knew from what he'd seen on the maps and Jeff's is the road was, a, was number 48. Um, and he had a rough <laughs> direction that Jeff had pointed he did have a map that he'd got from reception and looked at it. But all the signs were in Cambodian. There was quite confusing. Luckily Solomon, a bit of a driver, remember, professional driver. He could sort of get his bearings, he worked out where the sun was, he was going, you know, southwest. So yeah. Built in compass. And they headed off. Nice slow speed on the Cambodian roads, potholes everywhere, crazy drivers, crazy taxi drivers, tuk-tuk things, which were like motorbikes at the front with seats, two seats behind, oh, just weird. And there was just, traffic was horrible in Phnom Penh. The hardest part on that journey was getting out of Phnom Penh. When they eventually started getting out, it was just like farm tracks. Um, so they were going the wrong way and going round, doubling back on themselves and going a bit further around the edge of the town, eventually spotted a number 48. And it was sort of in the right direction for where the sun was. But they did, it's part of an adventure. You get lost and, you know, you you just explore. And those bikes, you, you fill them up for a couple of dollars, the fuel, and they'll do 100 kilometres or more. No problem. So off they went out of Pompen and they got on this road. Um, not a very good road, tarmac, potholes. A bit hard to describe, it's sort of countryside, the odd buildings. But there was things on the side of the road at people's homes and things. They were flogging food and uh, fruit and all sorts. So they stopped a few times on that road, found different types of food and I think that's the same all around Asia there's always something on the side of the road and people were really friendly there was no problems at all some of the cars were a bit crazy and the lorries overtaking them, them on the bikes a huge well it felt like the lorries were speeding but they probably weren't and they got quite close so it was quite quite dangerous any of your travel insurance you've got going into Asia won't count for anything if you hire a bike and you have a bump, I'm sure it's not going to cover you, unless you've got the proper licenses. And that woman in the bike shop didn't even ask for licenses. 
didn't ask whether you had insurance or anything. You're just taking your own life in your hands. So you've got to be quite competent on a bike if you're going to just do what Solomon did. Be prepared, you know, for some close shaves with vehicles because they don't care. I'm sure they'd knock you off into a field, carry on driving as if you didn't didn't even know they'd knocked you off. But they headed off on this road. It wasn't hugely busy, but there was a lot of lorries and the, the surface kept changing all the time. And they were, they were averaging about uh, 45 kilometers an hour, not very fast. But weather was good, scenery was beautiful. They just kept going. Hopefully they were on the right road. <laughs> Number 48. It seems a lot of lorries on that road, so it must be the right one. And as it happens, it was. They, actually about three hours, maybe two and a half, three hours, they arrived in um, Krong, or whatever it's called. And the signpost actually said Krong in English. So that was a surprise. They thought it was going to be a longer ride. They came in. It was quite a nice little town. Um, wasn't huge, but there was a garage. There was the equivalent of what we call 7-Eleven in Thailand. Convenience store. And fuel. So they piled in there, filled the bikes up. Into the convenience store. Topped up with the usual stuff. Cigarettes and bits and pieces. And... Solomon pointed to the map to the person behind the counter, tried to explain the addresses, guest house. Yeah, usual signs when you're in a foreign country, just oh, I've got and he pointed the, the, the guy in there pointed just down the road, same road. So they were obviously in the right area. Left the station down the road. Sure enough, there was about six or seven guest houses in this town with signs up. Um, so they stopped, there was a couple next to each other they stopped at, looked pretty much the same. There's like a drive where you could park your vehicles next to these little rooms, they're just like little chalets. So they dropped in at the first one, 300 Thai baht a night. Pennies. So back then that was, oh, it was just, you know, it was like th less than five dollars. It was crazy. Brilliant. Cheap. Um, and they were, this was probably two in the afternoon, so plenty of the day left. Checked in, parked the bikes up next to this little room. The room was quite nice, had a little TV, had aircon, little shower, double bed, a little desk, and that was it. But there was a meter on the wall for coins for the aircon, which is unusual. We are playing traffic today. Oh. Yeah, there was, and they didn't have Cambodian coins, so, but it wasn't that hot. There was a fan there as well, so use the fan. Cambodian coins for an aircon. That would just chew them up. Mm. So, yeah, dump the bikes, dump the stuff. All seemed fine. And they were in a bit of a sort of a little town. Off they went exploring on foot. Food. Didn't see any bars or anything. But there were a few sort of local if you can call them restaurants the old tin tables and plastic chairs and uh, umbrellas on the side of the road and street food so everything they wanted but not really seeing any sights in the town there was nothing no monuments or anything special it was just plain little town surviving quite dirty um a lot of rubbish around the roads were dirty. You could see quite a, f a lot of poverty. But hey ho, in Cambodia, you're in a bit of a town. Enjoy it. See what you can find. And they wandered around for the day and the evening. Plenty of food, a lot of food, some nice food, a variety compared to Thailand. Well, similar, but it was a different, different variety. There was uh, plenty of meat and rice dishes which is fine for Solomon and they quite nice hotel bit of telly aerobics whatever so they'd eaten they got a couple of beers at a convenience store and had beers in the room so everyone was happy 
Ning was enjoying herself. Um, she was keen to get in front of email and nearly, nearly everywhere had email cafes or internet access, a computer somewhere you could pay a couple of baht to use. So she was quite keen for email every day or so. Definitely she still had that boyfriend. Gotta be. Gotta be. Maybe she was checking her bank account. At this point, Solomon was paying for everything because it was so cheap anyway. He hadn't asked her for any money and she hadn't said anything. But I'm sure she probably had money. Um, so, fine. Absolutely fine. It was a good little working relationship. <laughs> and that's it. They're on their way to Shalookville. Good stuff. Foreign country. A couple of little Honda scooters. Beautiful, beautiful woman. I mean, thinking back of Solomon, he was, what, two, just over two months previous, he was getting depressed in his own country in the UK, driving his taxi about, um, life, he was just fed up with life, and and he was drawn back to Asia again, draw, drawn back to Thailand and Patea. And look at him now, landed on his feet, beautiful woman, he's got a little motorbike, he's in Cambodia, paying pennies to live. Um, what a fantastic. Such an experience that everyone should have that experience. Things are great. Things are great. We'll catch you on the next episode where hopefully they head off to Schluckville. That's meant to be even back then it was supposed to be the next Patea, the Patea of the future, the entertainment zone of Cambodia of the future. So Solomon didn't know what to expect. We will see. See you on the next one. Bye.